everyone. My name is Michael Simire. I'm the moderator of this morning's on the record briefing on climate change and green growth here at the ongoing. Ongoing 15th um, conference of the parties to the UN CCD in Cote d'Ivoire, every course. Our briefer today is um, Gerald Asambe in Jimmy of the Climate Change and Green Growth Division of the African Development Bank. Gerald is a sustainable development expert with over several years of experience with the African Development Bank, the Humanitarian Water and Food Award Foundation, Danish Development Researchers Network, and various NGOs. Gerald has work a special interest in climate change, sustainable energy, green growth, sustainability leadership, environmental management, international development, and project development and finance. As a consultant for the AFDB, Gerald is supporting African countries in the development of long-term strategies for NDCs implementation, tracking the bank's climate finance activities by providing support and direct technical assistance to climate finance reports to MB, MDB's working group, OECD, and the Climate Policy Institute. Gerard also manages the bank's greenhouse gas accounting and reporting tool, as well as its staff training program on climate change, mitigation and finance, reviewing and screening projects for GAG accounting. In his previous role as research analyst, Gerald contributed to the designing of the Sustainable Energy Fund for Africa, CIFA, Sustainable Energy for All Africa Up, c for all and the Climate Finance and Technology Network of the African Development Bank. Gerald reviewed and evaluated projects for the West Africa Forum for Clean Energy Financing, WAPSEC, on behalf of CIFA, and prepared projects preparation grants for bankable medium-sized private sector renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Gerard holds a master's in sustainable development with specialization in climate and energy policies from Le Comping University, Sweden, a graduate certificate in energy, environment, and sustainable development from the University of Oslo, and a Bachelor of Science in Geography from the University of BU in Cameroon. Gerard has lived and worked in several Africa and European countries such as Cameroon, Tunisia, Egypt, Tanzania, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Cote d'Ivoire. Today, we will explore issues related to the AFDB's climate change and green growth strategy framework, which is supporting the economic ecosystem restoration agenda in Africa. Indeed, just yesterday at the COP, the AFDB launched the Africa Green Growth Readiness Assessment Report, which summarizes this initiative. Today, we highlight the bank's ecosystem restoration agenda as, as well as explain as explained in reports. Please know that this briefing is being brought to you by the Al Journalism Network and the Robert Bush Sifstong in partnership with the UN CCD. We truly appreciate Mr. Jimmy for his time in being part of this briefing. Thank you for coming, sir. Just before we commence um, some ground rules, if you have any questions, kindly use the chat Q&A function. And um, for bandwidth, we advise that probably if you meet, meet, uh, put your camera and mute your microphone, we will call on you when it's time to speak, when you raise your hands. So, Mr. Njime will give the opening statements, which I then open up for questions. With that, I pass it on to Mr. Njime. Mr. Njime, sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Michael, uh, for this opportunity to present uh, what the bank is doing in terms of uh, climate change and green growth. As you know, uh, just yesterday we published the African Green Growth Readiness Assessment. That is a, rest, a, a report that has taken us uh, four years in partnership with the Global Green Growth Institute uh, based in Korea. Uh, as you know, green growth is important in terms of Africa's uh, development and um, in the light in the in the context of climate change uh, that we're all facing. So in this regard, so we involved the Global Green Growth Institute, since they are the expert in terms of developing green growth strategies all over the world, so work with the bank to carry out this report. So basically the report uh, was 
looking at the issues of readiness, how, how African countries are ready in terms of green growth. Because if we, if we talk about green growth, many people don't know what is green growth, or they always confuse that with the green economy. So green growth is the process towards green economy. So we can have a green economy without talking about green growth. And in the report, we we're looking at the, uh, assessing the state the, and trends of development and green growth in countries with a set of indicators. And in this pilot study, we, we selected seven African countries, uh, which are uh, Tunisia, Morocco, Senegal, Mozambique, Kenya, and Rwanda. So those are the countries we, uh, uh, we took as the pilot countries in terms of assessing green growth readiness. So we were looking at the context in terms of how do how African countries, given the global goals of NDCs and the sustainable development, how, how can African countries simultaneously implement these two goals? So that's why we came out with this strategy of looking at that assessment. So. Then now, at the, uh, when we're about to complete the study, the, uh, the COVID also struck in, so we stuck. Okay, we cannot publish a report in the context of the, the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. That was that, that was transmission. That was we had to report a bit and also look into consideration how is COVID uh, uh, nineteen also going to affect this process of green growth and also the process of NDCs SDG implementation. So we, we were stuck in that part in that process. So we were also. Work took into position uh, issues of uh, uh, 19 situation. And then we also came out with these interesting, very interesting findings. So I will read down some of the findings and recommendations that we came out in this study. So basically the Green Green Assessment we used at nine key models, nine key, or let me say nine uh, indicators or dimensions that we were assessing countries like, so we look at the political commitment, we'll look at the institutional and governance, the level of policy, the level of sectorial uh, targets, leg legal uh, regulatory framework, financing, human capital resources, monitoring and, and, and then resource, uh, research and development. Those are issues that we're looking at. So we saw that okay, putting, like, putting these nine dimensions together, how can we assess the state and trend of green governance in Africa? So that's why we they selected those seven countries looking at these key dimensions, political, the political commitment for each of the countries, what is the political, what is the institutional and governance framework for each of the countries, what are the policy in place? We look at the sectorial issues in place in each of the countries, they will look at the legal and regulatory framework, financing and budget. So we came out with interesting findings that I'm going to present to you. And besides the interesting findings, also look at uh, good practices. We, we, were not, we were not like comparing the countries, but we wanted to see what's happening in each of the countries. Like you see in, in Gabon, you know, Gabon has a, a sustainable forest management framework that is there to manage the forest. And under the emerging Gabon strategic plan, the Green Gabon plan, uh, they, have, they promote timber, agriculture, livestock, fishery as key sector to promote national value addition and diversity by the, of the economy by 2025. That is for Gabon. Then in Kenya, we discover that there is the inter-agency coordination, we discover that the national climate change Council of Kenya is chaired by uh, the president who oversees the implementation of the National Climate Change Action Plan and also advise national and sub-national bodies on mainstreaming climate administrative and implementation measures. So in each of the countries, we came out with different good practices that are happening in each of the countries. And then in Rwanda, we have the FONERWA, that is the, the National National Fund for Climate and Environment, as, a, as an instrument for financing Rwanda needs on environment, climate change, and green growth. And then in Morocco, uh, Morocco is turning the climate change capacity building. They have the force in Morocco, which is uh, for capacity building on climate change as aspect of the Paris Agreement with the private sector and CSO bodies on the board. And it was set up, uh, it was set up as part of the implementation of the strategy for sustainable development. Then Mozambique, uh, which is called the Ministry of Economy and Finance, provide oversight and mitigation and adaptation related to of funds such as the National Fund for Sustainable Development, the Road Fund, the Energy Fund, and the Agricultural Fund. Then Senegal also saw that um, the government is removing financial barriers for private sector in, uh, participation through pilot projects. So the government is supporting private sector investment. Then in Tunisia, we saw the innovative financing mechanism to scale up solar water heaters and heater, solar, solar water heaters. So those are all good examples that we saw in each of the countries. So we wanted to come out with what is happening in each of the countries. So I, I, I know in relation, in relation to what we're talking about uh, the certification, what to find out, what to find out is that 
for all the seven countries and most of the countries, they have sectoral plans. But most of those sectoral plans, they don't, fo they don't focus on agricultural land use. They are focused mostly on energy, transport, uh, issue of mitigation. But where Africa, meanwhile in Africa, the most important part of uh, issue is agriculture, and that's where most of our emissions are coming from. So at least uh, apart from all those countries, it's only Mozambique alone that has a plan that covers the forestry and agricultural land use. I think other countries are uh, focused on energy and uh, other mitigation aspects that are not related to agriculture. So uh, areas where, like I said, areas where, also report that areas where progress is made is on, on high political commitment to green growth in most of the story countries in Rwanda and Kenya. We that in, in Rwanda and Kenya and Morocco, there's high political uh, political will, which is championed by the president in, in Rwanda and Kenya, and then the king of Morocco is championing that in Morocco. And then also, like I said, we found that uh, all countries have developed national climate change or green growth strategies and in, and in some complementary action plan, e.g. Green Gabon, green, uh, Morocco Green Plan, Emergency Senegal Plan. And then there's also the emergence of financial readiness with the Green Climate Fund, and that, that provides direct access to modernities to most of the uh, countries now, instead of going through the rewards process of having climate uh, resources. So now most countries have access to the Green Climate Fund. And then the, also that African climate uh, NDCs and uh, uh, LTS, are, uh, that is the long-term strategies, are yet to be trans, uh, translated into costed investment plans. So that, this, is a, this is very important. Um, because before the, uh, the COP in Paris, most African countries were asked to submit indices. But initially, they were supposed to submit the long-term strategy first before the indices. That was a, a global, like I can say that it's a global mistake because you cannot talk about indices, it, just a declaration. But what was supposed to be done was submitting the long-term strategies first, because long-term strategies are, are the implementation plan for implementing indices. So countries were just declaring indices, but the most important part was the long-term strategy that we're supposed to develop and, and adopt within the national development plans before submitting the NDC. So that was not done. And now for you to implement the NDC, you need to have the long-term strategy and also foster, make it to be uh, like an investment plan to develop your country. But now the NDCs are just policy statements without any plan for implementation. So then there's supposed to be need for implementation and development of the, uh, the long-term strategies. So there are also uh, uh, high level recommendations that I can summarize and uh, give to you on that political will. Like I said, we have those nine key dimensions. So I, just, I don't want to take much time. So under the nine key dimensions, I just state briefly the high level recommendation for each of the dimensions. So on that political vision and commitment, uh, we discovered that there was an ensure continued political commitment for green growth at the highest level of government. So that is the recommendation. So that must be. Uh, no political commitment for green growth at the highest level of government. There must be increased green growth awareness at the level of government, local towns, local communities, and the private sector, including SMEs. So under institutional and governance readiness, there must, uh, there must be need to create a coherent policy environment that facilitates intergovernment coordination mechanism and key ministries involved in green growth, NDCs, and SDGs. Then there's also the most we need to strengthen capacity on horizontal and uh, vertical coordination and provide technical assistance for, required for operationalizing green growth. And then they, they, under green growth readiness policy, they, will be, they, they, they need to ensure the implementation of green growth strategies and policy by mainstreaming them into national development plans, engage in long-term plans for transition of each African country to green growth. And then under sectoral readiness, there must be improvement in the sectoral plans in sectors with green growth potential, such as climate smart agriculture, renewable energy, energy efficiency, green transport. Yeah, not, uh, this is more important because look at the, the COP that, that focus on desertification. Like I said during the introductory remark, that what we found was that most countries are doing well in terms of green growth, but they are focusing more on energy and transport and other energy efficiency uh, systems like resource efficiency. But, the key sector that requires a lot of attention that is focused on the COP is about agricultural land use. And many, many countries do have structural plans in terms of developing uh, climate smart agricultural system and also to make the agricultural system to be green. And then, under uh, legal and uh, regulatory framework, uh, there must be robust uh, legal and regulatory framework reform that facilitate the introduction and adoption of green growth services and technologies that is more also ensure the enforcement of green growth leg legislation and standards. Then financing green growth, the most uh, foster to 
and foster access to uh, finance to green growth in particular domestic resources as well as as there is generally no dedicated finance for green growth and sdg so one that is also very very important even though countries are already having access to the green climate fund now but at the, at the grassroots level many are suffering or many face a lot of challenges to access climate finance and uh, we have carried out a study in the bank that we have now developed tools in the bank to help uh, SMEs and S uh, CSOs to understand what is climate finance. Because many don't know what is climate finance and they cannot involve in something that you don't have an uh, idea of what it is. And so that's why and there's a need for um, the creation of bankable project. But before they develop bankable project, there must be a need for the developing the technical capacity that help them to understand what is climate finance, climate change, and how to mobilize resources. So. That is also very, very important. And then that, that would also link to the issue of research, development, and innovation. They must be, they must be provided with look, uh, local in, uh, incentives and institutional knowledge also need to be scaled up in terms of how local knowledge can be scaled up. But we know in Africa, we have a lot of lo local knowledge that is not scaled up. Our doing things at a local level that are part of the group, but not nobody's taking them down as important. So they must be need, need to promote local knowledge and institutional knowledge. The human capacity, I think we also discovered that most schools and universities don't have programs in terms of climate change, even in the universities, in the but they have courses, like we discovered there were just few courses that this development, but like a whole program in African countries, universities uh, would have programs in terms of on green growth, climate change, environmental sciences, that most universities don't have those programs. And especially in, in most francophone, like what you saw in Gabon, uh, develop any program on environment, science, and climate. And then there's also the need to develop monitoring and uh, monitoring reporting capacity, MRV, to enhance yep. reporting of and collection of data. So those are the, in a nutshell, that, uh, that, I can that, I just summarize what you found in the report. So and then also the green, for the COVID, we mentioned about greening the COVID packages so that they can also be resilient and also uh, withstand the change of uh, the climate change. So that is a, sum a nutshell is a summary of the report that we that was launched yesterday. And uh, the countries that were piloted out, like I said, there are seven countries, uh, Morocco, Morocco, Tunisia, Senegal, Gabon, Rwanda, Kenya, Mozambique. Those are the seven countries that we uh, used for the study. Thank you very much, Gerard. <laughs> Thanks for your, your insightful uh, uh, Briefing. So I would, um, before we kick off, I, I made some, you know, said some things you said about the uh, your, your your reports. You said that um, you discovered that um, several, uh, you discovered several countries um, they, they, they didn't focus on land restoration. They are looking more into energy and transport, and that you found challenging. Um, am, am I right? Yeah. No way. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that you, you talked about um, the need for political will that some countries actually uh, um, demonstrated this with political will in their endeavors, like um, Kenya, Rwanda, and Morocco. Um, before going, I want to ask what, what was the criteria of choosing these seven countries? Why did you pick out these seven countries? Yeah, the first criteria is that in the bank is, a, is, a, is an African bank. and. What we did was that we did consultation and uh, wanted to give representation to all the regions. So the seven countries represent the five regions of Africa. Okay, North Africa you have uh, and we have five regions that in Africa about uh, geographical regions. You have North Africa, you have to Morocco and Tunisia. West Africa, you have Senegal. Central Africa, you have Gabon. East Africa, you have Rwanda and Kenya, and South Africa, you have uh, Mozambique. So what did we can connect like? Like I said, this is a pilot. We are thinking of if we have more resources, we'll go to a lot of countries. So like for the pilot, what we needed to select a few countries. It was supposed to be five countries, even though we added, two, we added two extra countries to make it to be seven. So that the, what we did was that we, did, we needed to give geographical representation for all, all the five people. Okay, thank you. Um, I, before I open the floor to the, to the, I want to ask one question more. Um, those countries that you said that, um, um, didn't do much on in terms of land restoration. Is the is the bank? Uh, do you have any intention to help them to focus more on these areas going forward? Not that I like us. Not that not, not that they're not doing much on land restoration. Right? But like they're doing it. What I was saying that in terms of policy, okay, okay, okay like 
policy, how do they, what the countries are doing so much. They don't have, they don't have documentation to show that what is what we are doing in terms of policy and, and the sectoral implementation. But with, with, uh, in terms of renewable energy, energy, there are already, there are already strategies and there are sector papers that, are, that they have in those sectors. So I think what we need to do is that uh, we have the countries to document what they're doing. Because all the countries are the Ministry of Agriculture and Land Use Forest, they are all there. But apart from what I say is that it's only Mozambique that took forestry and red plus as champion for its green growth, back towards green growth. Okay. Okay. Um, let's uh, open the floor for, we have some questions here. There's one from an anonymous attendee, because this forum is open for everyone, not just our fellows. Uh, his question is that to what extent is there a gap between countries? promises and their policy plans. Which countries are doing well to keep their promises? Okay, the, okay like I said, um, uh, we, uh, we, the key recommendation for this study that I'm not really uh, elaborate more is that we, out of the seven countries, we categorize those seven countries into three several uh, layers. So uh, the countries are doing well. We have Morocco, Tunisia, and Rwanda, that are countries that are doing well. Then the second country was a uh, group of countries, we have Senegal and Kenya. And then last we have uh, Gabon and Mozambique. So in terms of those countries are doing well, in terms of policy and implementation, those countries are doing well. And that's where we have the highest level of political leadership and also legal environment is very conducive. Then they also have the finances that is being turned down in the Ministry of, uh, to promote climate change and green growth activities. Then while the other countries, there are more they are still struggling to pick up or to catch up in, because what we should understand is that climate change or green growth sustainable development is like an indicator or like a, uh, let me say, a by, a by set of development. You cannot say that you are developing when you're not being autosy. So there are just like a fallout of development plans. You see that all these countries are, that they're trying to strive towards sustainable development and are doing a lot of in terms of policy. Like look at what's happening to, in Rwanda. You see that the country has good leadership. The sector policies are there. The person is championing all this environmental campaign and everything. So it's now one all this is all everything is in place. Whatever we are talking about, sustainable development also falls in place. So those countries are already progressing. Have leadership. Uh, they are already progressing towards that end. Development also follow, and then we see that they are also making progress in terms of environmental gains. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, there are two questions from Busani Bafana, one of our fellows. Um, is uh, from Zimbabwe. Okay, the first one says, what informed your assessments of the seven countries and how will the findings energize governments to, to investment in green growth? Yeah, okay, what informed our assessment? First of all, like I said, uh, in 2015, countries were obliged to submit their indices. And at the same time, they, were, they also signed sustainable development goals. And those are two challenges that African countries are still facing today. And like I said, for the NDCs, they were uh, not, not that, let me not use the word that they were for, but they were obliged to submit it to have a compromise, a global compromise, because they wanted the Paris Agreement to be signed by all the countries. So they were, they were asked, the country were asked to just make declaration about what they intend to do with the indices. The, for the SDGs, I think it was like the UN said that, okay, one all the countries to be, to be out of poverty by 2030. So how do they, how do African countries, Given that we are struggling with poverty and other, ch other challenges that, that, that we know are affecting African countries, so with these two global goals in mind, how can African countries successfully implement them? I would say that the, the most efficient way that we can, that African countries can implement these two, two global goals or two global commitments is through green growth. Because economically, they will see that they will use the GDP that the, that the countries are already developing through the GDP. But green growth is a process that transition countries from where they are to become more economically sustainable in the long run. So that's, and that's, and that's why we use those nine uh, dimensions that I mentioned that uh, those are the key. Well, that's why I study structural readiness to see how countries are ready and look at those nine dimensions, political weight, the policy, the sectors, the financing, the legal, human capacity. Do those countries have those, are they ready to implement green group? And it, so consequently, by implementing green growth, they're also implementing the sustainable development goals, and they're also taking the price agreement into consideration. So that's, that's what we're looking at in terms of policy and preparation. How prepared are they to implement this thing? And also now, we discover that as the study involved, 
the findings are there, and what we have already we'll bring the uh, report and we we'll share it out to the government for them to implement. One is to be done. If they need more resources or they, more, they need more assistance, I think the bank now can discuss with them in terms of how we can move forward in terms of helping them to implement some of these recommendations. But the, recommend, the recommendations, even though uh, we use seven countries, that are for all African countries. So all African countries are, can use the same recommendation to see how they can assess that uh, readiness towards being good. Thank you very much. So the recommendation will, 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 will somehow be relevant in them. Um, to, to all, all other African countries. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'll, yes. go, I'll go to uh, Busani's um, second question on the Q&A Q Q Q section. It says, in your report, you underline that there's growing political commitments to green growth in Africa. Are you com convinced that Africa can make a transition to cleaner fuels without destabilizing its development and economic growth given the reliance on fossil fuels? No, that, that that is a very typical question. I will kind of, uh, even at the bank, uh, the bank has renewed uh, or, or revised energy policy. I think that the little the bank is not going to finance going forward is poor. The, the bank is open to, to finance uh, also for other like natural gas, like what they're doing in Mozambique and other African countries. So we cannot say that we, we cannot abandon that, what we have, we have to use what we have. But the most important thing is that making it to be efficient. Okay, there are other technology that, can use, that we can use now in terms of developing them efficiently and to avoid emission of greenhouse gas to the atmosphere. So instead of going the traditional way of just harnessing and exploring in the, in the that police environment, I think the most important thing now that African countries have to use, uh, talk about the energy efficiency. There's technology for all these uh, resources. So if you have uh, natural gas, you can harness it, make it, make it more efficient and using the right technology that will reduce emission of uh, CO2. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you've taken note, uh, Bosani. The next question is from Chem Chemchai Chiroi. She's uh, from Kenya. Uh, she says, how is Kenya performing so far? And with the country changing its head of state in less than three months, will the shift in political leadership going to affect the study? Yeah, you? I think that is a... <clears throat> Yeah, that's a political, system, a political question, and uh, like we said, uh, Kenya, uh, Kenya, in the report, we classified Kenya in the second tie of countries that performed very well. I think Kenya was not able to count in the first tie. Well, the first tie had uh, Morocco, Tunisia, and Rwanda. Kenya came in the second tie of countries that performed very well. So we believe that um, one matter in Africa is the uh, transition, political transition. It is a smooth transition. Uh, from, uh, from uh, President uh, Kenyatta to whoever is coming to be the next president, I think. And they already have the, Kenya, uh, the Green Growth Strategy that they uh, that, uh, have adopted. The National Climate Change Plan is also there. So I think one matter is implementation and also political transitioning. Um, that we know most of the time in Africa causes a lot of problems. But once the political we is there, the whoever is coming in and they, and they follow what they have already, like the political strategy in terms of the National Climate Change Strategy and the Green Growth Plan that they have read, I think there's no problem if they can move forward without the new, uh, without Kenyatta being there. So the new president or whoever is coming should just follow what was uh, what has been agreed and, and adopted by the Kenyan parliament in terms of climate change and green growth. Okay, I noticed that in your presentation you said that um, there appears to be um, an effective interagency coordination in Kenya already. Isn't that so? And apart yeah, from yeah, the, like, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, for, for the political win, the interagency inter coordination that we talk about was um, in terms of the implementation of the NDCs and the SDGs. Because they will discover okay. that they have a, in the Ministry of Planning, they are all working together. They, we have a central in the Ministry of Planning uh, that they, they work together in terms of monitoring the implementation of those two strategies. I think that's the only thing that was discovered that they have a unit that is responsible for the NDCs and the SDGs, and they're all working together in the Ministry of Planning. And they have a coordination meeting that is chaired by the minister and the ministry that, and the treasury that work together in terms of how they track what Kenya is doing and also to report on what they are doing. Okay, there's a question from Paul Omorogu, he's from Nigeria. He wants to know, he says that, um, I would like to hear your assessment of Nigeria's performance on this issue. Unfortunately, Nigeria was not part of the study. Unfortunately, Nigeria was not part of the study. Uh, but we think that um, if we are going to look at other countries, Nigeria is going to be, uh, I think, another country we're going to look at. But I know Nigeria is doing a lot in terms of uh, 
climate change and green growth now. I think even the central bank is uh, what they're doing. I know they have approached the bank in terms of uh, um, starting to green their financing instruments at the central bank. Um, well, I think we've done a lot of training with the central bank in terms of helping them to green their finance, make their lines of credit also to be green. And also, and there are also initiatives that are working with the bank in terms of making the sure that the financial sector is also going to be green. And there are also SMEs and other policies that were working with Nigeria. So in terms of green group assessment for now, I cannot say much about Nigeria because Nigeria was not considered part of this study. Okay, another question from Paul. You said that what is the bank's response to the call to support the One Planet Summit initiative and activate the $19 billion pledge? I hope you're aware of this. No, uh, for the for, for the one planet summit, I think we are at the bank. Uh, we have adopted the uh, Africa as, uh, adaptation solution program, the Triple AP, which is an, a very very ambitious program that the bank uh, that was launched last year in the uh, one, uh, one planet summit. Uh, anybody can go online and look at it. The Triple AP is a very very ambitious program, and uh, that program during uh, the one planet, uh, there were. Then SMEs were awarded this time, this last year, and during the One Planet Summit, we are given an award in terms of what they're doing in terms of uh, land, uh, climate change uh, adaptation and resilience to those NGOs or initiatives that promote innovative uh, mechanism or instrument for, especially, and most of the winners were of agriculture. I think there's a link that anyone can look at it online. Most of the winners for that program were agriculture. Yeah. They come up with new food system, new food way of uh, farming, and how to restore land and also to uh, food ensure food security. So the bank has uh, adopted that ambitious program that is there to support SMEs and support uh, entrepreneurs in terms of building adaptation and resilience in African countries. So it's a very ambitious program that is part of the one billion or uh, the one planet summit that the bank is working with uh, President Macron. And that program is being led by the bank and the global uh, global center on adaptation. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to know uh, what what the intervention of the bank is to this project, to the Great Green Wall project. It's been a very it's a major project. The Nigerian president is the is the, is the president of the of the initiative, heading the initiative, mm -hmm. and that um, I'm aware that I think that there's been some recent submissions about him. Um, the AFDB uh, encouraging this initiative and also the um, the uh, worrisome um, lake chat area. So what what's, what are you doing about it? Are you, can you can you bring, use the opportunity to brief us about what uh, the AFDB is doing to, to support the, the Great Green World Initiative? No, under the Green World Initiative, we are, we have an ambitious program called the Desert to Power. That was top. you know the Green Green World program was started by the AU and the uh, FAO. So the bank came in and okay, that the FAO are doing the land restoration desertification program uh, program. So the bank under the Green Green World will focus more on the Desert to Power. That we want to focus more on providing energy to those countries because you know that the, the Sahel there's a lot of abundant abundant sunshine, but they have power. So. What the bank is doing is they want to focus on desert to power initiative that they want to give energy access to all the countries in the green green world and they're working in partnership with the g5 g5 Sahel countries first of all then now they want to expand that to other countries that are not part of the g5 Sahel country like nigeria and uh, senegal but mostly now the bank is focusing on the g5 Sahel countries and also the ultra initiative of the desert to power they want to provide energy access to all the countries of the Sahel and the and the Green World countries from East, uh, East Africa to West Africa. Okay, thank you very much. There, okay, uh, David Kuzi. <clears throat> David Kazi has a, a question for you here. He says, How have the small island states like Mauritius, it's from Mauritius by the way, been performing so far? No, Mauritius. Uh... Small islands, I think for now, I think we've not been doing a lot of work on in Mauritius. And they know Mauritius, even though it's a small island state, is not as compared to other African countries. Mauritius is more like a, a developed island state. I know, uh, but I think we've not been doing a lot of work because we're also doing uh, intervention with countries that, that come to the bank that they need support from the bank. But I think uh, we're not doing a lot of work in Mauritius because maybe let me put this in uh, this saying that Mauritius has not approached the bank for support in so many things. So, they are no Mauritius doing well, but in terms of the bank support in Mauritius, I think it's very, very limited. 
Why is it so? Why, why is it that you don't more focus for Mauritius? It's um. No, no. Like I said, uh, is the country that approach the ban, and uh, okay. so I know. Yeah, if the country do not find it interesting, what to they have the what well, about to call the country strategy papers that that the ban develop for the country. There's the engagement paper of all the country. So in that paper, that the, the countries and the bank come to an agreement. What is what you want us to do? If maybe Mauritius need. I think they are focused on more governance and budget support instead of looking at the issue of environment and all that stuff. So that's why we are not getting involved with all that. Right? Okay, okay. I hope David is taking note of that. To Jupil, Zulu, I have a question for you. you Say that how is Zambia performing in terms of management of forests and green environments? Okay, I, I think that this is important to let uh, know uh, the asking question individually, but. Uh, just to let you know that we are working on a project called African Green Growth Renew Assessment that uh, is going to come out very soon. We are going to start working on that project as soon as possible. That is going to like run countries in terms of the performance on environment and green growth. I think all these countries about the countries, I cannot talk about Zim, uh, Zambia now or all these countries. They are not that, that's, that, report is going to, that assessment is going to come out, uh, or the index is going to come out very soon. That will rank all the 54 African countries in terms of like green growth readiness or uh, performance. So I know Zambia is doing well in terms of uh, climate change and green growth issues. I think uh, the mine they're trying to green the mining sector and they're also trying to green a lot of environmental stuff in terms of agriculture and, and land use restoration. But I cannot give a specific example about what they're doing because I'm not as this report was not focused on, on, on Zambia. The any country that was not part of this study, we are going to come out with the index very soon. Now we run all up to four African countries in terms of that green group performance and indication of how that, what, what is the policy and the environment that are operating on. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I remember when you so, were- uh, 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 Yeah, I'll appreciate if there are questions related to the report, specifically to the seven countries and not just go to another people who are, about the individual country, but this, um, I cannot give you quick answers to what I don't know. I think we'll focus on seven countries. And maybe the general question about uh, what the bank is doing in terms of all the, the key initiatives that the bank is working on. I think I appreciate your answer on those questions. Okay, thank you very much. But, but yeah, I, I want to ask, I'll ask a question, but before we go on, I remember when you started, you made the clarification. I think our fellows need to take note of that. You said that um, between green economy and green growth, that people are mixing them up. Can you just use this opportunity to, to, to give us an uh, explanation? Yeah, yeah, green economy is like the end of it. It's like the end, but the green growth is the means to green economy. Okay. Okay, so yeah, green green growth is the process to attain green economy or to attain sustainable development. So the people just talk about green economy without knowing. So we're trying to look at what is the, like I said, we're looking at the process and the readiness to what extent are the countries ready to implement this process, to implement this transition, but green growth is a transition stage. So that's okay. what, so that's how I, think, I don't want to put the conflict between the two. Because you talk about green economy, it's like a very big word uh, without any substance. The green growth now has a, the means is the means to the end of which is the green economy. That we're all uh, aspiring like climate resilient economy, low carbon economy. That all the end process, but the process is what we are talking about. Green growth. Thank you. I, I want to believe that you, the report also revealed the fact that, despite the fact that um, a lot of countries are having um, uh, better access to finance through the Green Climate Fund, for example, that there are still challenges inherent in the uh, efforts being made to access green financing to, to be able to you know, implement climate actions and all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the AFDB doing to assist countries to, to better access climate funding? No, what the, LD, the LDB is doing a lot now, like what the African Climate Change Fund, which is like a uh, fund created by LDB that is helping African countries to prepare uh, to mobilize from the Green Climate Fund. But it was created, it was started in 2015. So the African China Climate Change Fund is basically there for providing technical assistance to NGOs, to university research institutions to prepare to assess climate change, uh, green climate funds resources. So, that, so there, there, there's always for proposal. I think there will be third proposal very soon. Um, so the resources always allocated. I think there are many NGOs and SC, uh, are benefiting from, the, from, from those funds that have helped them to now 
prepare themselves to mobilize resources from the field and effort. So apart from that, even uh, uh, what the Africa NDC Hub now, which is there, uh, the Africa NDC Hub is made up of uh, a few institutions that is um, the secretary in the bank that also bring in other institutions that are helping African countries to prepare to mobilize resources from the Green Climate Fund and other uh, uh, bilateral resources. But that for then in, in, in a nutshell, I like to that we are preparing also technical assistance. All our projects now are changed for climate change and green growth. For the project to go to the board, we have to screen them for climate change and green growth. Like if you think about what all the greenhouse accounting to for all mitigation projects, they need to, they need to be screened. And they also have the, the climate change of that system to that for all adaptation projects, also screen them. So I also provide technical assistance and training to all African countries. But what is important to know is that from the story, the, the, the interest about climate change or resources, climate fund or climate climate finance can have to come from the countries themselves. I think from the study that we found out from, from the study, I think it's only uh, Kenya that has allocated at least a quarter of its budget for climate change adaptation and mitigation. The other countries have not even allocated that, uh, those resources for climate change adaptation and mitigation. So that is where you have to start. So before you even go out for climate to look for to mobilize resources externally, you have to start by allocating within your own budget how much is what I'm going to allocate for climate change adaptation and mitigation? But that's why I'm saying that. And the person, the person asked from Kenya about, I know the person was coming to that direction because in the new climate change action plan adopted in Kenya and the Green Group they have allocated a quota, a, a quota of the budget for climate change uh, mitigation and, and adaptation. And that's why that person, uh, the, the, the person was asking that if the current president is no longer there, is that plan going to throw? So that's why I'm saying that one matter is the political, uh, political transition and also uh, the new current, the new president is coming to, if you if respect the terms and the, uh, the mandate of the people of Kenya that have voted for that deal that are going to allocate, I think they 1% of the budget to climate change. So that is also very, very important. So even though we need external resources, but also they show the technical capacity. Most African countries and NGOs and uh, institutions they have, they have the technical capacity and they don't want to invest in that technical capacity because Understand what is climate change is important, understand what the climate finance is important. So we provide a lot of technical assistance to all African countries and we organize seminars, webinars, and even this report is part of that support our given African countries in terms of understanding what is climate change and how to can most mobilize resources. Thank you. Uh, before we go ahead, I want to know is, David, are you there? Do you have any um contributions or any insights you want to share with us, David? Hello, David. Are you there? Are you talking about David Akana, Mike? D David Akana, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, David, uh, yeah. Right, uh, because we also have um, yeah, have David, another David. Uh, David Cassie from, David uh, Cassie. from Lesotho. Sorry. Right. Um, sorry for Mauritius. Um, no, not particularly. Um, I'm very impressed with respect to uh, the um, findings and the recommendations from the report. Um, what I think it's probably um, <clears throat> very pertinent here is the fact that um, from the bank's perspective, the intention for them is that other countries, yes, the study might have only been in seven countries, but the expectation is that the recommendations can be applied you know, in other countries as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, interesting report based on um, the launch that we had yesterday. Um, and I uh, probably would, you know, uh, call on the fellows as well as anyone else who is following to sort of, you know, find a way to have access to the report. There's a lot that you can write about with respect to uh, green growth on the continent at this point. Um, to what extent are we greening our economies? Um, where are we right now? Um, you know, what are the perspectives? So I see a lot of storylines that are emerging from this. So um, nothing very concrete uh, other than probably allowing uh, the uh, reporters uh, to continue to quiz uh, Mr. Sambe, who obviously uh, participated in uh, the design of uh, the uh, the study itself. So um, uh, once again, maybe just to thank Jared uh, uh, for accepting to participate this morning. So um, yeah, over to you, Michael. 
Thank you, thank you, David. Um, Gerard, uh, would you mind sharing the, the link to the full report with us? Okay, I'll do that. I'll share the link. Uh, I'll share the link with you. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're running up. But before we go, um, I remember one statement you made, which I found rather disturbing. You were uh, you made one uh, one uh, remarks concerning the um, that the um, NDC is coming before the long term strategies. Uh, that yeah, you said the NDCs, uh, long term strategies are supposed to come before the NDCs, but instead the NDCs were prepared before, before and submitted even before the the long term uh, strategies, which we're trying to resolve. Now, what is the implication of this, and um, what is the AFDB doing to to help address this challenge? Because I, I'm a person aware, uh, even in Nigeria. In fact, today there's a meeting in Abuja concerning the the the, the, the uh, initiative in, to initiate the the, the project. So what's, what are you doing concerning um, ways to address this um, seeming um, disturbing development? Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a very important question and it's good I it captured what I said. So I think the issue is that um, the, there's, there's the climate change uh, movement or the, uh, the UN movement in terms of uh, having a consensus with all the countries, like you know, they, want, they don't want the, COP, uh, the Paris Agreement to fail. I uh, know France being a strong, Country in terms of, of diplomacy and, polit and politics, they wanted every country to come on board and also have a consensus in terms of having all the countries to sign the Paris Agreement in 2015. So they did everything possible uh, that all the countries to come up with the NDCs and they should just have a consensus and just move forward. And okay, they now, so now you see that you have taken more than how many years since the Paris Agreement was signed in 2015. Now it's seven years. I think there has been, they're still struggling. Now the country has been revising the NDCs even. And countries are not even developed, uh, finished developing the NDC. In, them. in Africa, just one country has developed the long-term strategy. Only Benin has developed the long-term strategies as of now. So the long-term strategy, uh, they are the investment plan, because the NDC is just a, polit a political statement. Uh, like your President Buhari can go there and say, this is what I will do, this and blah, blah, blah. But now the long-term strategy is the investment plan that details whatever what you need. And that focus on the key action plan, the budget and everything. And that has to be linked to the national development plan of the country. So most, almost all the NDCs that were submitted in 2015 were not linked to the national development plan of the country. They were just political, they were just empty statements. They were not tied to the national development plan of each of the countries, none in Africa. And those NDCs were developed by, by consultants that were, they were not even developed by national experts most of the, most of the time. So I know the UNDP sponsored that. They used a lot of uh, resources from the UNDP to hire local consultants to develop the NDCs. Right? Yeah. So you see that now that's just struggling to develop the second revised indices. Then now I think uh, now they have now the, uh, the, the Glasgow uh, climate path, which is there to emphasize that they have to do now or develop the long-term strategy. So only Benin has developed the long-term strategy for in Africa as of now. But interestingly, Ethiopia and Rwanda they have developed their green growth strategy since 19, uh, since 2011, and that's what they translated into the NDC, and that's why they don't have any problem. If you look at Kenya, Rwanda, and Ethiopia, what they submitted the NDCs are the green group strategy that, that, way, that, that the bank supported them to develop in 2011. That's what they submitted at the NDCs. And that they are not changing anything. So this, they, they already had the plan since 2011, before even the price, before 2015, even. So when, they, when, they, when the issue of the NDC came in 2015, they just took at the, they look at the green growth plan that they have already developed and they translated that into the NDCs and submitted to, to, the, to, to, to the UN FCCC. Uh, so there's a very huge implication, and you will see go. And if we're not careful, you see drag like this to the next uh, the, uh, to the next global cup. I don't know when it's going to. I know that minor cup and the and the major cup because if uh, 2050 was a global cup in Paris, then 20 uh, the cup of last year in Glasgow was another major cup. So the the other cup that are in between are just preparing can are just helping countries to prepare the process of implementing what was agreed with the major cup. So I think. African countries have it, uh, they're in big trouble because the NDCs do not reflect their development plans. And if they do not reflect their development plan, they cannot implement them. And that's what I talk about, even the inter uh, inter uh, interlink between all, interconnection between the Ministry of Planning, Ministry of Finance, and all those things have to come on board in terms of, if you're if you if not linking them together, and then you're going to the Ministry of Environment, the, the, the people work in the Ministry of Environment is not, not taking any country and there's a bit, if they bring the Minister of Planning in, Minister of Environment, Minister of Environment, and Minister of Finance, they sit together and they come up with an investment plan, which is like a long-term strategy that I see that they are going to put that international development plan that is going to work. So 
that is the issue that was there when we were stuck. And the bank is also uh, supporting countries now to understand that you have to develop the, the, the long term strategy. I think we have a, uh, the, the, our new climate change action plan that we have developed and the climate change policy the framework that have the policy, the strategy, and action plan is taking that on board. And we are seeing how we are going to see how we are going to support countries to start developing that investment plan. We have already started the process of supporting countries to develop their investment plan. We can also support the investment, uh, the long-term strategy, but uh, the NDCs involve more political will from the country themselves without any power to do that. But I think we are advising them to provide technical support to know understand what is uh, what needs to be done. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of questions in the Q&A section now. Um, Paul Omoregbe, I don't know, I don't understand what you said. said no country. Is this all the seven in the study or none at all in Africa? I, I'm not clear, I'm not clear with that. Can you explain your question better? Um, we'll go to Robert Amalemba. Robert says, hello everyone. Away from the gloom and doom, predictions come on in climate reports. I'm happy with the droughts in numbers. 2022 reports released on Wednesday by UNCCD, which among other things, talks about a UNCCD public awareness campaign to showcase solutions and rally global action on droughts. Do you feel the solutions approach will extend the adoption of Abidjan call? Uh, I think it's, it's asking about the report that was launched by, uh, by UNCCD. UNCCD. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that, uh, that question is not related to what we're talking about. And I think uh, and I must, I must, I must in the report, but I believe that if the report has been launched by UNCCD and the countries are Happy with the report. I think what matters is the implementation of whatever report has been launched. I would report are talking about now are recommendations. So what matters is the recommendation of the report, the findings and the recommendations. Are the countries willing to, to do that? So, like we said, land regression and desertification and drought are very, very important uh, because our, our Africa's agricultural system is on rain fed system. So it's important that we take those recommendations seriously and green growth provides a lot of opportunities. Uh, to green our system and to also understand our local environment and know what is happening in our local system. So how can we uh, do this better? So that is very, very important. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, okay, before, before I go back to the to our host, just a quick question from Paul. He says, uh, NDCs do not reflect development plan. Is this the situation for, with all African countries or just the seven in the, stu in the, stu in the study? I just, I, just, I just answered that question that the NDC did not reflect. That's why that's, that's I was saying that they did the NDC before the, the long term strategy with the investment plan. So I, I think I've answered that question before. So they have to go back to make the NDC to reflect the national development plans of each other country, which are, as of now, they don't reflect those development plans. Okay, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate your insights. Uh, we are running out of time. We'll be rounding up very soon. I, I want to, to, um, to go to our host. To give us any comments or any concluding statements. Thanks, Michael, and thanks so much, Gerald, for your time um, and answering so many questions from our um, our participants. Um, I'm sure they've all found that really useful. Um, for um, our participants and fellows, um, I've posted a link to the report in the chat. So if you want to have a look in more detail at what Gerald has been talking about, you can look in the chat. Um, and yes, once again, thank you so much, Gerald. Um, uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Jared. Okay, thank you so much. It's my pleasure, and I'm happy to have the questions. And like an African myself, I'm coming from a rural African, uh, a rural part of Africa. My village is also rural, so I know that there's a lot of work for us to do in Africa. And that's why I found Green Group and Sustainable Development very, very, very uh, interesting. So what I advise is that we have to look at uh, our local environment. We have local solutions, let's, as journalists or as media uh, practitioners, let's also try to go back to, to our roots and see what is being done there to also promote our local initiatives. It's also very, very important. Uh, that I, I was like, it's embarrassing to me that uh, as I was growing up, I only came to know, know about uh, charcoal, important, importance of charcoal when I went out of Cameroon, when I went to Sweden. But at those days, I think that were already around us, but we never knew how to use them. So the media has a very important role to play in terms of synthesis and also educating the local masses about what is happening and the opportunities. We should not look at the West, but look, look at our local environment. There are so many opportunities and solutions that we need to 
bring to the limelight for people to understand what is happening and how to capture them and make use of them. Thank you. So we're coming okay, to- Thank uh, you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, Charlie, and do you have any comments? No, that's, that's everything, I think. Um, thank you everyone so much for joining. Um, if you want to join tomorrow, we'll be here at the same time. Um, you can use the same link. Um, so thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. Uh, we've come to the thank end you. of today's um, briefing. Thanks for joining, thanks for your time.